The EEG, the electroencephalogram, it uses a series of electrodes attached to the scalp to detect, amplify and record the electrical activity of the brain. So the D-A-R-E acronym, DARE, is useful to help you remember what the EEG does. Detect, amplify and record electrical activity of what? Of the brain. So an EEG is a relatively cost effective as opposed to certain neuroimaging techniques like MRIs. Non-invasive procedure used in sleep studies to determine brain death, to monitor the depth of anesthesia, and to monitor how the brain's functioning after an injury, tumour, surgery, etc. And it measures two parameters, frequency, which is the rate per second, as well as amplitude, the variations in the peaks and the troughs. So based on the frequency of the EEG patterns, we've got four types of brain waves. We've got beta brain waves, which range from 50 to 30 cycles per second, which are characteristic of an alert state. We've got alpha brain waves, which range from 9 to 14 cycles per second when we're in a relatively relaxed state. Theta brain waves, 4 to 8 cycles per second when we're in a meditative state. And delta brain waves, we only experience them when we're in a deep sleep, one to three cycles per second, minimal brain activity. So I want to cover three key aspects of EEG readings during sleep. So notice during REM sleep, the EEG patterns are very similar to when we're in a waking state. That is, we have these beta-like, sawtooth-like brain waves indicating a high level of electrical activity in the brain, caused by dreams. Now, during non-REM sleep, notice how the frequency gets lower as we move into a deeper sleep. And also notice how the amplitude gets larger as we move into a deeper sleep as well. So, a light non-REM sleep, stage one, we've got higher frequency, lower amplitude, as opposed to a deeper sleep, stage four, where we've got the lowest frequency and the highest amplitude. So during stage one of non-REM sleep, it's a light sleep, combination of alpha and theta, predominantly alpha, it's easy to wake the person up. During stage two, it's also a combination of alpha and theta, but the brain waves are getting lower in frequency and higher in amplitude and are predominantly theta. During stage three, which is a deep sleep, delta brain waves first appear on the EEG readings, but it's predominantly theta. During stage four, the deepest sleep, combination of theta and delta, predominantly delta. REM sleep, beta-like brain waves, as reflected by the significantly higher frequency and lower amplitude brain waves indicating a higher level of electrical activity as a result of the dreams. Other features of sleep indicated by EEGs, well during stage two of non-REM sleep we get sleep spindles which are high frequency low amplitude brain waves and also K complexes which are single bursts of high amplitude brain waves that are caused by maybe an external sound that doesn't wake the person up but the brain registers the sound or maybe some type of muscle twitch. And stage three and four of non-REM sleep is known as slow wave sleep because of the exceptionally slow or low frequency of brain waves indicating a lack of brain activity during this deep stage of sleep that is thought to be important for physiological restoration. So you can check out my clip on the restorative theory of sleep. Anyway, I hope this has helped. Cheers.